Future Cash Show. Brought to you by the Club of Amsterdam. Welcome to the Future Now Show. I'm Lise Wolding. Our guests include Dr. Andreas Walker, Nick Price, and Hardy Schlor. First, please meet Dr. Andreas Walker, presenting the work of the Swiss Hope Barometer. Andreas, go ahead, please. Hello, everybody. I am Andy Walker, speaking from Switzerland. I am the president of Swiss Future, the Swiss Society for Future Studies. In Switzerland, we have a very good presence time, so everybody is focusing on the presence. But on the other side, we have a long tradition of fears and of sorrows regarding the future. A bank is financing with a huge effort a barometer of sorrows. Another bank is financing a barometer of, uh, of fear. And uh, they are asking again year under year, what are your fears, what are your sorrows for next years? Becoming president of Swiss Future, I started with the barometer of hope. Is there a reason to live tomorrow? Are we motivated to live tomorrow? And this year we have more than 20,000 participants in Switzerland joining our survey, telling us what are their hopes for tomorrow. Andreas, what do you find is the primary driver of the people of your pan that you're paneling? Are they driven still primarily by fear? Or what, what is the primary driver? For us, it was surprising in a positive way. When we have started, everybody told us, oh, come on, nobody is interested in hope. Hope is something for emotions, hope is something for girls, hope is something for the church, but not for businessmen, not for politicians. Severe persons, academics, they are interested in risk management and things like that. But we have such a lot of participants in Switzerland and the figures are so high regarding the value that we see that the population is quite interested in hope. Not the politicians, not the banks, not the experts, but the people, they quite are. Hardy or Nick, do you yeah, have I anything have, you I have, add? I have a question to ask you. Um, well, on, on, on first impact, I would say this. Um, I would say that the um, <clears throat> subject of, of, of hope probably is the highest when the fear is the highest. But um, I wonder when you when you actually scan that by subjects, have you ever correlated that with news? Have you ever um, uh, correlated, well, these are the talking points in the media and then these are the fear points that people have or have you uh, noticed an inference here? Yep. Uh, starting six years ago, we have had a broad range of questions, hopes and fears. And we have realized that if you are talking about fears, uh, then it's just a feedback of the media news. The hopes, they are much more deeper. The hopes are a question of, I want to live. The hopes are a question of, I want to live together with a family. It's, I want to do something, I want to, to, to be motivated, and we realized that um, the question of hope is much more sustainable than the question of sorrows. Sorrows are just reflecting the media news. Let's take Fukushima, let's take Ukraine, let's take question about an earthquake or so. When we are asking for fears, then we have a quick feedback. When we are asking for hope, they are much more sustainable. Well, interestingly enough, we've we, we done a similar project, and what we have noticed, and I don't know if you can cover that, but what we have noticed is that people, in, in terms of hope, have shifted from um, I want to live from the 80s and 90s to I want to survive in the 2000s. Have you, have you had some similar experiences? So we are starting with our survey in Switzerland. We do it in Germany and in France, in Norwegia and in, in uh, Czechia. And so we are living on such a high level. So it's not a question of surviving in the center of Europe. We are quite on a high level. 
My sure, opinion that we will have figures like that if we ask the question in Latin America or in India or in Africa. But in, uh, to be honest, in Switzerland, we cannot speak about surviving. Mm. I have a question, um, and we talked about this a little bit uh, in advance, Andreas, about entrainment. Your comment that fear me seems to be primarily driven by media dialogues, which we've, of course, talked about in terms of control of messaging, control of attempt to control mechanisms and mechanisms and delivery channels and so on and so forth. It's uh, how does one deal with that level of entrainment? I mean, when we spoke to the uh, the uh, the psychological the psychological entrainment of, of cultures. You're trained to think, oh, you're a naive little girl. If you express hope, you're just looking at rainbows and unicorns. That's not a businessman. That's not practical. Clearly, that messaging is in the, the core of most of our structures. It's in the core of what we're hearing in the media. How do you see us effectively dealing with that? I think that's an important part. We realize, and that's special for uh, our people, um, hope is, is not just a question of human being. There are a lot of cultural influences. There is a lot of question of, of leadership. And if we do as a way in Google, and if we are uh, looking for internet pages for hope, or if we are looking for internet pages for fear, then we see in the German-speaking area, we have 10 times more space for fear than for hope. In the Anglo-Saxon world, it's just around the other side. In the Anglo-Saxon world, we have about 50 times more pages about hope than of fear. But in the German-speaking area, we have the special uh, aspect of the German angst. And for <laughs> us, it's a question of, <laughs> absolutely, the German angst. And um, for us, it's a question of leadership. If you are in a business, do you lead your people? There is a goal. We want to reach this goal. We want to match this, uh, this objective. Or are you punishing them? Are you making them afraid? And so you, we see it's a question of the family, of your social nutshell. It's a question of the, of the school. How have you been trained by your teachers? And it's a question nowadays where you are working. Is there a hope for the bonus or is there a fear for the malus? And we cannot understand why on one side innovation is so, so important, but nobody has the idea that the working space is a place of hope. What we have learned, that the people in Germany, in Switzerland, in France, are focusing now on the natural. We are asking them, are you hopeful for your personal situation in your family, or for the politics, or for the economy? And there we understand that the hope level for the personal situation as a couple, as a family with the kids, is quite high. And the level with the politicians and with the economics is much, much more lower. We ask them, what's your level of hope regarding your personal situation, regarding the national politics situation, the national economic situation, the international politics situation, and the international economical situation. And with another question, we are asking them then, on who are you relying regarding your hopes? And there we see that's the level of, um, of politicians and of economists to be persons of hope is quite, quite low. So people are refocusing just on the, on the personal situation. And I guess that's one of the problems we have for our situation in politics and economics. People, they want to live, but they want to live the personal life. And they do not rely anymore in the politicians and the, in the managers. Thank you for joining us. Let's build a better world.